And now we have a surprise guest uh, because I will not be uh, introducing QTE4E uh, as Oksana said. Marilu is here with us. And hi, Marilu. Can, can you hear us? Oh, yes, I'm here. Ah, perfect. So actually, I should make you a co host so that you can share your screen. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And thanks for uh, joining for those who. Uh, I mean, people should not know this, but uh, Marilu is actually in the US right now. So it is really early for her and she suffered through a snowstorm to join us here uh, today. So. Well, I think you can see. <laughs> yeah. In Aspen today is uh, very snowy and it's also very beautiful. But of course, <laughs> I already fell once two days ago, so I had to be very careful. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to share and uh, to share the screen and um, can uh, can you see? Yes, perfect. Okay, the floor, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. So first of all, uh, many thanks to uh, Zeki for uh, and uh, to all the organizers to have uh, um, uh, to have uh, uh, summoned this. Uh, um, uh, this occasion to discuss about uh, a, a concept and a topic that we consider uh, very important in our uh, um, quantum technology education for all pilot project, uh, as you will see in, uh, in a moment. Uh, this was uh, a bit uh, um, a surprise because uh, um, this presentation had to be performed by Zeki, so, but uh, Zeki asked me this morning, uh, to to do it, and so uh, I hope that uh, everything will go very smoothly, uh, and uh, um, and uh, I hope essentially to um, share with uh, with all the audience a few ideas that I hope can be of inspiration for uh, the um, program uh, that will follow uh, this introductory session. So uh, this is a presentation that we have already shared within the um, most recent uh, European conference on quantum technologies. And uh, it is about indeed the massive education and outreach in quantum physics and technologies, the challenges and the perspectives. And among the uh, perspectives, uh, in particular the opportunities, we really think that uh, um, uh, responsible research and innovation is one of the most interesting. So uh, first of all, why uh, we are uh, uh, worried about all this and we are committed with this. Uh, so first is uh, that the second quantum revolution is perv pervading our everyday lives and uh, Second, uh, and that is uh, what is uh, particularly important for our pilot, uh, is that uh, indeed uh, this uh, can be, uh, a, and it is an extraordinary educational opportunity. <clears throat> uh, this comes from the fact that in general, when one has to, um, uh, one is committed with educating to scientific uh, thinking, uh, a massive uh, amount of, uh, of persons and citizens uh, of, from uh, of any age, uh, of course, uh, there is a, a challenge that is uh, uh, intrinsic to the uh, education to scientific thinking, and it is uh, the fact that the scientific thinking involves uh, every single corner of our brain uh, in the way uh, we um, in the way it works, and uh, essentially, indeed, it comes from uh, it starts from observation of the facts and uh, and um, fact check checking, uh, which uh, uh, after uh, uh, using some form of experimental uh, uh, literacy um, uh, requires us to create uh, new ideas uh, or ideas uh, uh, able to explain those facts that we are observing. And then uh, after using some form of symbolic uh, uh, um, system uh, literacy that can be math maths or can be a visual language or other languages using a formalization, some form of formalization that allows to uh, uh, provide uh, um, quantitative uh, um, uh, predictions uh, uh, that then uh, are to be with uh, 
critical thinking, using critical thinking and again some form of experimental literacy, be checked against uh, uh, the observation of the facts or the experimental facts. So in this uh, um, uh, cir circle, that is a, a virtuous circle uh, to start with, uh, uh, every single corner of our brain is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, involved. Uh, and uh, um, uh, there, are, there is also a lot of uh, engagement with respect to what is around us. So it's not just about some abstract thinking. Now, uh, of course, uh, this is something indeed that it, that it is also in common with um, artistic thinking. And uh, uh, that is uh, another uh, um, uh, form of language and also of creativity uh, that uh, humankind uh, uh, uses and uh, develops to uh, be in uh, close contact with reality, right? Now, the problem is that uh, in, um, in schools and uh, almost in every kind of, um, uh, of environment, the, the way physics uh, um, thinking and scientific thinking is uh, uh, taught uh, is in a deductive manner instead. So using uh, formalization, starting from the formalization and then uh, sort of so from the equations, say, and going to the observation of facts. Now, uh, if we come to uh, to, quant uh, to quantum science and technologies, uh, all this problem, uh, all, all, all this setup that have been just discussed uh, um, uh, is uh, even more uh, challenging because in the case of quantum uh, physics and quantum technologies, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, a problem uh, both with experimental literacy because uh, the experiments on qu quantum physics uh, are done, are performed in very highly, highly specialized labs. And the kind of symbolic system literacy, so the maps that is needed to understand quantum physics is so much advanced, okay? So it, this is really the challenge we have in front of us. Then I'd like to, uh, to enter much uh, deeper uh, into the um, topic of, uh, of this event that is about uh, um, it is about responsible research and innovation. I'd like to uh, introduce a couple of uh, ideas that uh, for me has been, uh, have been very inspiring. And one uh, is about uh, the um, uh, theory of multiple intelligences by our Gardner, uh, who uh, essentially says that distinguishes between abilities uh, competencies that are abilities we are aware of and intelligences that are competencies applied in a given context. And uh, uh, in this sense, the, in the, the, the kind of definition of intelligence that our Gardner has introduced uh, many years ago and has really changed the conversation, as uh, he says in quotes, uh, um, uh, with respect to this uh, to the way we, we can think about intelligence indeed, is that intelligence is a biopsychological potential that is used to process information, that is activated within a cultural context and is used to solve problems and create products that have the values uh, for that cultural context. So we already see where this responsible research and innovation issue comes about, right? In this sense, intelligence is a unique composition of many intelligences, implies more languages. Um, well, if you see here on the, on the left, um, this is uh, taken from, uh, uh, from Google Images uh, somewhere, um, uh, is a de depiction that de de depicts the 10 intelligences that our garden eventually, uh, eventually has kind of classified. As you can see, there is the logical mathematical, but there is also the uh, bodily kinesthetical, the linguistic, spatial, naturalistic, musical, and so on and so forth. So every intelligence implies uh, a kind of a form, a symbolic form, a language, uh, technologies are developed to support and compensate language difficulties. Let's imagine, let's think about, for example, the um, 
uh, where the, the, the DSA, how are they called? So, uh, <clears throat> the, for example, dyslexic or uh, some uh, forms of uh, impairs, but not, not necessarily so, uh, so evident, okay? Every one of us has uh, his or her own uh, weaknesses and uh, his or her own strengths in, uh, um, in uh, uh, coming in contact with the reality through some form of language, right? It is always evolving, uh, and in this sense, uh, we, we can say that disciplines are means and not aims to get into something that has value for a given uh, cultural context. And also we can imagine intelligence as a form of distributed intelligence in, indeed. So for example, let's think about uh, the, the, the citizen science approaches that are, um, that are uh, very well much used these days uh, for uh, research and also for education. And here you can see in this distributed intelligence concept, we can see one of the responsible research innovation dimensions. So that is uh, uh, at least uh, one or even two. One that is public engagement and the other one is about participatory processes with which we can involve citizens to do research along with us scientists. Uh, and it's not measurable, measurable with a number that is uh, the in intelligence, uh, the, the QI, the IQ, sorry, uh, I wrote it in Italian. Okay, um, the other inspiring idea uh, that is very important for RRI uh, is uh, uh, again, uh, comes again from Howard Gardner, these uh, five minds uh, of, for future. So uh, he says that um, uh, for uh, the, the future of the humankind, we need to develop five kinds of minds. And uh, one is uh, the discipline in the, the uh, mind, uh, meaning that uh, we really need to be very highly specialized uh, in some form of languages. He says that uh, three are the, the main ones, history, science and maths and arts, because if we, if we have to solve very difficult problems, we really need this. But this is not the old story, right? Because we really need also a synthesizing mind and a creative mind. The synthesizing mind is the mind that is able to um, pick up among exillions of information that now we have, we have at our reach, the very important information. Otherwise, we really, a researcher, or I mean, whoever uh, 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 is uh, doing uh, his or her job, would get lost. And the creative mind, because without a creative mind, humans can be replaced by computers. Uh, and also, and we go deep into the RRI, RRI uh, dimensions, a respectful mind and an ethic mind. Otherwise, uh, whatever uh, the, the very intelligent and creative, uh, wonderful product that uh, the human mind can create, if it is not for good, uh, it is not only uh, uh, not useful, but uh, it can really make uh, so many damages that then uh, require so long time to, for uh, uh, recovery in them. So uh, because of the discipline in mind, we have to educate to use progressively complex disciplinary language because of the synthesizing creative mind to educate, we have to educate also to synthesis and creativity. And because of a respectful and ethic mind, we need to educate with a responsible research innovation approach. So this is the um, uh, this is again taken from uh, uh, this time from the Wetenskop and Almanet uh, website. These are all the uh, um, uh, RRI dimensions. And uh, of course, I, I don't uh, step too long into this slide because uh, I'm, there, there will be plenty of time during the next uh, sessions where, and including the panel uh, discussion where all this will be uh, discussed in detail, but this is just to make contact with the main topic of today. And so uh, just to um, uh, go quickly uh, towards the conclusion, 
uh, in order to um, uh, to educate uh, uh, everyone along uh, or to quantum science and technologies along these lines of course what we want to do is to uh, go uh, to do this at least uh, um, along uh, two directions so one is a kind of spatial direction that uh, counts the number and the types of education context, uh, educational context. So this can be uh, informal, non-formal, so-called context. Uh, so uh, in a, say, whatever uh, public engagement uh, environment, or can be a formal context, so for example, in school, or can be a formal context in a training, uh, professional training of uh, employers in a company that has decided to open a, an activity in quantum science and technology. And then in age, so then, then there is a time direction that, uh, because we really want to uh, reach everyone from zero to uh, 99, uh, so to speak, years old. And so this, we want to fill out all this space. And to, in order to do this, uh, there is a one word that is uh, very essential and we cannot give up on this and it is engagement. So we have to find ways to engage everyone independently of the uh, co cultural context where the person comes from and independently of age and independently of the degree of instruction uh, we uh, including uh, including a university uh, physics students and P phd physics students including researchers uh, and the very uh, um, uh, including experts of the of the given matter we need to the first step is to engage and the way we want to do this uh, <clears throat> we can imagine to do this uh, is um, about uh, uh, we want to do this in the pilot pro in our pilot project uh, is uh, both using basic concepts and using quantum technologies i won't go into the details of this because uh, zeki can you tell me how much time do i have i think uh, it's it's done right you, you can continue for a couple of minutes couple of minutes okay so we'll be very quick in this because uh, um, is not the central uh, uh, part of the uh, of today's event uh, but in essence what we what we aim at uh, doing is uh, um, is uh, to um, uh, to uh, um, um, find ways of storytelling both uh, basic concepts and uh, quantum technologies using uh, the, um, uh, that kind of scientific uh, uh, thinking process that had been described at the very beginning. So starting from the observation, so starting from some uh, kind of experimental demonstration, some kind of, uh, because we won't have access necessarily to uh, the very highly specialized uh, lab in uh, quantum physics, for example. Uh, and then uh, through that, uh, starting from that, uh, then go into the uh, uh, creation of the new idea or of the understanding, so to speak, and then using some form of math uh, or visual language, some form of symbolic system, uh, uh, that will vary depending on the degree, the instruction degree of the audience we have uh, in front of us, um, uh, elaborate further, further on the concept and then uh, uh, going back to the, uh, the close the circle towards again, towards the, uh, the experimental observation. And uh, in order to, uh, and of, of course, we, we want to do this with the basic concepts, uh, but uh, we can also imagine to build up uh, macro stories, uh, the way we can uh, talk about them, I mean, uh, this, uh, this is a possibility, macro stories that are about instead quantum technologies, so more complex stories 
uh, that uh, in order to be understood, uh, they need uh, the understanding of the basic concepts. And so by this, uh, doing this, uh, uh, we can in fact uh, also um, uh, practice uh, with our audience, uh, with, uh, with the persons we aim at, uh, we can practice uh, that kind of scientific thinking uh, that uh, um, is able to solve the complex problem, problems uh, by crumbling them uh, down into uh, smaller pieces uh, of which we have instead of an understanding. And in practice, uh, how to do this, and then uh, I will, um, I will uh, uh, stop. Um, uh, this will, uh, can be done by using uh, all the uh, resources for uh, storytelling, quantum physics and te technologies that are already around. And this is a non-exhaustive list of them that uh, we are uh, compiling uh, while writing this paper that is in preparation from the, um, uh, man many of the participants to the pilot. Uh, and uh, uh, just to give you a better idea, uh, for example, if we have to, um, uh, to speak about or to talk about ob observation and facts analysis and checking, we can imagine to use um, virtual labs. Uh, like uh, the quantum flight trap on the VQOL uh, or Labster or others, or we can imagine to use quantum games, or we can imagine to use animations, quantum fields, arts, interactive, uh, uh, artistic, uh, um, interactive uh, um, ex uh, experiences, uh, sorry. Uh, and then also quantum physics concepts labs uh, and our quantum physics algorithmics labs uh, that are uh, again around. Same for the creativity. In this case, we can imagine, for example, um, uh, the short animations uh, like the quantum fields that we have uh, at QPlay Learn to make an example. Or, uh, or this is uh, um, uh, sorry, I have to, to make this uh, uh, running exactly because it's too nice. So this is the quantum jungle that we just inaugurated. And it is a way of depi depicting, uh, okay, as you can see, the time evolution of uh, a uh, of a quantum state uh, of a qu quantum particle that is created by touching the springs that are in this uh, uh, six square meters uh, uh, installation, and then the LEDs uh, they switch on with an intensity the intensity that is proportional uh, to the probability of the quantum state, and then if one touches the springs again, then there is the collapse as we just saw the wave function. Okay, and then uh, for the formalization, we can use uh, the concepts labs uh, like quantum moves, quantum odyssey, or even Qiskit, and again quantum uh, and again uh, quantum games, and eventually, if we wish, also some math. <laughs> Okay, so this is what um, uh, we are uh, going to do with our pilot, uh, and there are plenty of opportunities of rethinking quantum physics teaching, uh, research tools, uh, outreach centered on education, and also to empower formal and informal learners, uh, and uh, certainly enhance uh, our intelligence in attracting diverse audiences via engagement, introducing teaching and following on research. So the challenge is how to do this without uh, math and experimental literacy. And uh, I gave you some ideas about what we're thinking within the pilot, uh, the accessibility of the resources, the quality of the, res of the outreach resources, because there is a lot of quantum junk on the internet. Uh, the design of measurement tools, uh, because we are scientists and we want to see whether what we are conceiving really works and the, uh, the extent to which it works, and uh, certainly the responsible research and innovation dimensions. So, and then uh, with this, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, all of you for your attention. And uh, uh, of course, uh, also the fantastic QTDU coordination team and the brilliant community of our pilot project. Thank you, Milo. Uh, do you have time for a couple of questions or do sure. you have to leave? Sure. Uh, yeah, the session, uh, the conference session is going to start. Actually, I think it started, but just for a couple of questions, I'm, I'm here. Okay, so uh, let, let's, if, if you have any questions, uh, either you can ask them directly or through chat, and then we will continue uh, with the schedule uh, as planned.
Yes, there's a question. Uh, so I should read it out for the uh, recording. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very interesting about artifacts to help understanding of quantum. Uh, I have assisted several public engagement events and it's quite hard to design displays that explain things in ways that are engaging while not too reductionistic. So the question is, uh, do you have any uh, suggestions for that or uh, can you share your experience uh, in that uh, yeah. process? So, well, uh, I entirely agree. Um, it is, uh, especially with quantum science, it's very hard. Uh, to be um, informative uh, in a rigorous manner and uh, also in an accessible manner. Uh, however, I think that uh, um, if we are able to solve uh, the complex problems we solve in quantum technologies, to design quantum technologies, we must also be able to storytell in an accessible and rigorous manner these things. And this is really crucial because if we just tell the results of our research without storytelling the way, the process with which we came to those results, then uh, a gen general public will think that uh, this is just magic, you know, and uh, while uh, uh, this is science. And uh, how to do this? Uh, we have uh, to devote our attention to it. It is not so long time that scientists around the world uh, have uh, um, understood the importance uh, of uh, devoting time to outreach, in more, also in addition to teaching and to research. It is not long time, so we didn't do that much uh, ro uh, route uh, so far. And uh, it is not that uh, one outreaches uh, uh, from scratch. Uh, if we are scientists, we believe that we must first build up tools. We have to do some design. We have to make some uh, trials, make mistakes, uh, understand from our mistakes and uh, replan uh, our actions in a way that the next time they work properly. So we need to do research on how to do outreach. And uh, this is uh, something I think uh, is a concept that I think uh, should be uh, um, widespread as much as possible. And uh, uh, this is uh, in a way the same concept as a response, uh, research and resp responsible innovation uh, dimensions. Uh, just one more thing and then uh, uh, to answer the question. Uh, from my personal experience with the QPlay Learn, with the platform uh, where I directed um, the discovery section and that was created by uh, Sabrina Maniscalco, my, uh, my um, Sicilian uh, Finnish uh, colleague. Uh, so, and uh, that is uh, coordinated also from, by Caterina Foti, uh, they are all in our pilot and Kate is in the coordination uh, team of the pilot. So um, we, uh, the, this quantum jungle is an, is an, uh, is an example. Uh, so the math is uh, rigorous because it's performed by the computer who makes the simulations. And then uh, the, uh, what the math says is displayed in a way that is not misleading because the intensity of, of the LEDs uh, is in proportional to the probability of the quantum state to be here or there. And so uh, on top of this, one can create uh, exilions of um, outreach uh, uh, events. And the second uh, is something that we didn't publish yet, but for example, we worked at a way of uh, storytelling the Eisenberg principle and storytelling the Eisenberg principle using uh, what, is, uh, what is the math of the Eisenberg principle that are, that, 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 that are the commutators. One can do that. One can do that, only that one has to spend time, long time. So it is possible, but we have to decide first that is something that is not, uh, doesn't come from out of, of the air, but is something on which we have to spend our energies and our intelligence in much the same way in which we do this for our research in quantum physics and technologies. Thank you, Marilu. Thank you a lot.
So now we have to continue uh, with the schedule. Okay. And I, I think I answered the second question in the chat, mm -hmm. but I will just read it out loud for the recording. The question was, are you partnering with commercial quantum computing providers to start skilling up the workforce? Are the approaches you outlined suitable for a non-academic design? And the answer is yes, you should definitely check out some of the other pilots. Uh, in the QTEDU uh, coordination and support action. Uh, and thank you a lot for this wonderful presentation and joining us. Uh, thank now, you to, to uh, you and uh, please, uh, and uh, I, I wish uh, every uh, a nice uh, prosecution of this event. Sorry if I have to go. <laughs> ciao. Okay, okay. ciao.